And um, I'd love to hear a bit more about your experiences with people like, you know, and the perennialist school. I had a somewhat chaotic background dabbling with, say, Sanatan Dharma, Sufi Islam, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what is good and bad in some of those persons now you're looking back on it as a Christian? Yeah, well, okay, so I, I mean, I think what's good about the, 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 the perennialist, especially in my opinion, uh, Gino, is that Gino is a great tool against the modern illusion. I mean, he's the best tool. If you read A Crisis of the Modern World, it will just it smashes, you know, if you're, if you read that with an open mind, it will, it will smash so many of your, of, of your presuppositions about, about the modern, about modern reality and its accomplishments, let's say. So I think that, I don't know if there's anybody better at doing that than, than he did. You know, the rain, the quantity is just a ruthless book. Uh, I even warn people, I say, don't be careful. Like you read that, it can drive you crazy because it, it's like, if you smash, if I smash your worldview, I can leave you teetering. I've seen people reading those. I've, re, I've seen people reading, you know, become insane, like become paranoid and become uh, like just weirdly paranoid because it really does smash, smash something which is holding the world together. Uh, so I think, but I think that that's still what's good about the work in the sense that we need that, especially if you're like in your twenties and you're, you're exploring and you're, you have a lot of space and time to think, then it can really be helpful. Um, I think that the negative part of the work is that the, what ended up happening, and I don't know if it's if that's what Gino wanted. Uh, well, first of all, there's a lot of remainder of weird occult stuff in his stuff in his work. Just like you know, you can imagine like Origin, he fought the he fought the Gnostics so much that he was tainted by them, you know. And I think that that's something you see in Gino as well. You know, he remained a Martinist, Martinist his whole life, um, and he had he had he had uh, let's say. Um, suspicious uh relations let's say and 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 so i think that that's one part and then the second part is that what ends up happening with perennialist and this is something i've seen especially in the kind of shuon type perennialist is is that they don't realize that they're part they're participating in the breakdown of the world they don't realize that they are actually part of they are fueling the kind of new age mush and new age breakdown that they themselves oppose because they, they, the, the perennialists act as if they stand above all these religions. And we're wondering like, where are you standing? Like you, they stand above these religions and then they look upon the religions and then they, they, they compare and contrast them. And they, they, you know, they point to all these different things uh, as examples of the transcendent principles, uh, but they do so in a way that ends up, being almost like another religion. It's almost as if it's a religion in itself. Uh, and they obviously would deny this. They would say that's not what they're doing, but that's the result that it ends up, ends up causing. And it fuels the universalist mush, like the kind of, I believe in the universalist thing, therefore I'm nothing. And, I, and, I, and I've seen it happen. And I, really, and I really do think that that's a serious problem and that it leads to, uh, it, it's, it's fueling the chaos. And it's fueling... It's fueling weird things. Like it's fueling weird things like the idea of, it's fueling the opposite of what Gino said. Like <laughs> the, the, the perennialists seem to be somehow part of globalization. Like there seemed to be a perennialist thread in, in kind of this globalized culture. And this idea of a one world, one world government, one world this, there seems to be some perennialists that are in that, that thing. Like Prince Charles is a good example of that. Well, Prince Charles is obviously a perennialist, but he keeps talking in these weird globalist terms that are weird and surprising. And he speaks as if he is, again, above and, and, and appreciates Islam and appreciates Christianity, and appreciates all these different traditions as if he, he's floating above all of this. And so that's the problem with perennialism. And I, and I, and I, don't, see, uh, I don't see an easy solution about it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> and what then um, are some of the lessons that maybe we should take away from the fact that people like us uh, really look to these figures before we actually turn to our own Christian riches then? Well, I mean, it's, it's just like anything on the way that can, that can feed you in the sense that I think truth is truth. It, truth, you get your truth, get the truth wherever you can get it. I, I don't, I always tell people that, like, I, I don't think that 
I don't like people who tell me something like, uh, like a good example is origin. It's like, okay, so origin said some heretical things, but then people, if you quote origin, or if you, if you, if you make a gesture towards him, or if you've read something in his book, then all of a sudden you're suspicious. Like no, origin said a lot of amazing things, a lot of amazing, insightful, powerful things. So much so that the fathers you love are the ones who published his book, his books. And so, but he there there are things that he said that are wrong and let's point to those things and and you know and i i feel i think it's fair that he's not a saint and all these things i think are fair but it's the same for everybody and so whatever gino said which is true i think is fine to recognize and whatever he said that's not true there is problematic i think it's fine to just set aside because i don't identify with them it's 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 actually easy it's like if i read um it's harder for for things that i actually identify with so if 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 let's say uh I don't know if St. Basil the Great says something problematic, it's actually more of a difficulty for me than if Geno says something problematic because I'm not in his body. Like I, I, don't, I don't have, I'm not in a body with him. Like I'm not, he's like a, he's like a spice on the side that I can kind of sprinkle on and I can really see insight into, uh, but I don't, I don't feel like I have to follow him in any way. And so I think that that's the way that I approach all these thinkers. Like I can, I still have insight from uh, from uh, from uh, from Jacques Derrida or 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 different you know or Heidegger for example like I get a lot of insight from Heidegger but I wouldn't I'm not going to spend my time talking about Heidegger and so that maybe that's the thing it's like what I I tend to talk about things that say through Christ and then once in a while I'll mention this as an example, something odd or something off as an example, just to help people see that this is a universal pattern and it appears all over. And I think it's the same for other traditions. I think it's like sometimes you, you, you encounter Christians that weirdly talk about other religions more than they talk about their own Christianity <laughs> because they want to show, like they, they, they constantly want to show how these other religions are okay, but it ends up making a weird upside down uh, thing. And, but I think it's fine to, to, to once in a while say, oh, you know, you know, Ibn Arabi said this very powerful, thoughtful thing, or, you know, like in the, the Bhagavad Gita, there's this, this, this interesting, uh, this interesting idea that is worth considering, but I do so not as it not being my own, right? It's not my thing. It's, it's mm -hmm. something I'm pointing to on the outside, let's say. And um, some people from secularist backgrounds even have told me how much that they have been moved by your work. And uh, I'll not say the name in case they don't want me to, but uh, someone I mentioned to you before said that they were drawn to your work because of how you betray the Christian story is genuinely inclusive of all people, of all intellects and all backgrounds. It's a real and meaningful universalism. How does this um, universal Orthodox Christian faith differ from the phony universalism that we mentioned before, whether inside or outside the church? Yeah. Well, I think that I think that there there is an there is a recognition of the particular in Christianity, which is very important, and there is an idea that the body of the church, like let's say the body of your parish, that your actual parish, that's it. Like that's where you encounter everything. And so the problem with a lot of universalism is that it deals in, in abstractions and it deals in abstractions for reasons that are, that are sometimes not the right reasons. So I would say, I mean, I might disagree, but I would say many universalists that I've met, they, they are universalists out of a kind of embarrassment, out of a kind of embarrassment of being Christian. And so they, Every, like, I'll give you an example. Like, if someone asks, like, I, I've, you, you probably had that experience all the time. Like, you, someone comes up to you and asks you, well, what about Muslims? That's what they ask you. It's like, do you think that Muslims are also safe? And that question, that's, that's, the, that's, a, that's <laughs> like the, that's the devil, that question. That question is the devil, because why are you asking me this? What is your purpose? What are you trying to accomplish? Right. If I, if I, if I'm, if I see myself as a, as a sick person that is going to the hospital and I'm going around and I'm, and, 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 and then I, let's say I have a way to get to the hospital. And then you come to me and you ask me, how do you get to the hospital? And I tell you, I'm like, this is how you get to the hospital. And then you ask me, well, isn't there another way to get to the hospital? 
And I'm like, what? What did you? <laughs> what? What? What's, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what is your purpose? It's a, it's a, it's a very subversive type of attitude. And so that's what I see in a lot of universal moves and a lot of people who, who want to, who want to have that uh, type of stance because it, it makes them socially acceptable and it makes them, it makes them palatable to the modern thinking. Um, but it's not a good, it's a, it's a, I think, I think, I think people who are tempted by that, I think we need to kind of look at our own reasons for doing that. Like, what is the, why am I asking myself the question if others are saved? Like, do, ask yourself if you're saved, like ask yourself, what are you doing? Like, what are you urgently praying to God? Like, are you trans, are you sacrificing your passions to something beyond you? Are you, are you loving your neighbor? Are you, is that what you're doing? But if you're asking me, like, I want to know if, some some child who dies in India, if they're safe, is tell me what you think of that. And then they look at you smugly, like they've trapped you into some kind of like moral dilemma. I just this, I really that to me is the is the worst. And so the idea is that Christianity, Christianity formulates its its universalism or its universal story from within the Christian story. And there's no other way to do it. And and it and it does it through the the manifestation of the incarnation as something which can reach to the end of the world and participate in in bringing together all of reality and we recognize that we don't know how that works completely like i don't and it's also not my the specifics of how someone in somewhere else is going to be saved or not is really not my problem like it's just it's just it's a dishonest question it's a distraction uh to what you really need to ask which is you know do i love the people around me now like am i involved in 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 the in the community that i'm bound to you know i don't know if that it, i hope that makes sense yeah that does make sense thank you jonathan i think that's one of the things like i don't agree with a lot of what say father sarah from rose says but i think he's right about that kind of spirit of the age and uh, jacques Ellul, i think talks about that too with this kind of world opinion which is kind of pure abstraction as it were and actually dehumanizing in that respect then and um i think another thing that i read this article the scandal of christ by this nuclear scientist from sri lanka and a theologian and he talked about those other worldviews don't even offer salvation so it is a trick question even in that respect they're offering maybe nirvana or things like that. it's not salvation that they even offer themselves within their own stories so it's a ridiculous question on all those levels 